Hi, I'm Professor Goins, and welcome to the Math Professor's YouTube channel. If you look for videos explaining topics in college mathematics courses, you're in the right spot. So hit that subscribe button, and let's get into the current video. I want to take a look at um, showing how and why the set of rational numbers is actually countable. Now remember that the set n, right, which is um, called the natural numbers, which consists of 1, 2, 3, etc. And I'm not going to get into is it 1, 2, 3, etc. or 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. It just, it, it has the same number of elements. Uh, even if I was to take z, which is a set of all integers, but I'm just going to say the natural numbers for this video is 1, 2, 3, etc. Okay. The set n, which is the natural numbers, is countable, is countably infinite, and a set a is countable or countably infinite if there exists a bijection from n to a. So if there's a bijection between this set of um, counting numbers and a, we say that the set a is countable, or in other words, is countably infinite. So of course, what I'm then going to do is show that these, the, the set of all rational numbers, which as you remember, consists of the set of all fractions, um, one half, one third, two fifths, nine sevenths, etc., where I've got integer on top, integer on the bottom, and the integer on the bottom is not zero. The collection of all of those has the exact same number of elements as the collection of one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Now, how do I do that? Well. Here's, what, here's the um, schematic um, picture that I'm going to create, is let's say I do um, 0 over 1, um, 0 over 2, 0 over 3. Actually, let me do it this way. You do this a couple different ways. Let me start by, I'm going to do this slightly different. I'm going to say... 0, and then let's do 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, etc. So this first row, this isn't a sum, these are just a list of numbers. 0, 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, etc. The next row, I'm going to do, let's, um, the numerators are all going to be 2, so 2 over 1. 2 over 2, 2 over 3, 2 over 4, etc. The next row, hopefully you can see the pattern that the numerator is going to be 1, 2, 3, and the denominators and the columns are going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So the next row would be 3 over 1, 3 over 2, 3 over 3, 3 over 4, etc. Okay? And we can go in both directions. I don't think I'll be able to or need to go any farther than that. Okay, so then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to consider the following. Uh, I'm going to define a function going from, let's say, Let's call it sigma going from the natural numbers to the set of rational numbers as follows. Sigma of 1 is equal to 0. Sigma of 2 is equal to, well here's how I'm going to construct this. I'm going to follow the following path. I started here, and then I'm going to go over to 1, 1. So that would be 1, and I'm going to go over to 
here. So that means that sigma of 3 would be equal to a half. Sigma of 4 is going to be equal to, after I get to a half, I'm going to then I'll put dots here. So first function value, second function value, third function value. Then once I get to that, I'm going to start going diagonal. That's going to go to here. My fourth function value will be 2 over 1, which of course is 2, but just so we can see in the pattern. And then sigma of 5, all right? So that I've already got that sort of diagonal taken care of, so now I'm going to go down to here, and that's going to be 3 over 1. Sigma of 6 is going to be equal to, now if I go, I'm going to start going up this diagonal. Now, the way that I'm going to construct this is every time I come to a rational number that I have not identified as a function value yet, um, I'm going to assign it to be the next function value. But once I repeat a number, I'm going to skip it. Notice 2 over 2 is 1, and I've already used 1 as a function value. Let's actually put this as 1 over 1. I'm going to skip it, and then I'm going to go up to here, which of course is a third, and I haven't used that yet. So therefore, the sixth function value is going to be a third. And then I'm going to go over to here, and then there's going to be my next function value, and I'm going to continue down this way. And the idea is I'm going to diagonally go through this entire set here, and that is going to define a function from n to the, I'm going to say it this way, it's actually going to be the positive rational numbers, union 0, okay, as follows. Therefore, the cardinality of the positive rational numbers, union 0, is the same thing as the cardinality of n. So that means that the non-negative rationals has the same size or same cardinality as the positive um, values of n. Then what I can do, so let me go ahead and pause this so I can clean this up and then let me show you how I can construct a bijection from the integers to the rational. So let me go ahead and pause this. So here's what I have. We have sigma, which again is a bijection from the natural numbers to the non-negative rationals. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to actually have a, a, a bijection from so the natural numbers, or another countable set, to the set of rational numbers. So another one I'm going to do is let's define a function that I'll call psi from the rational number, or I'm sorry, the set of all integers to the set of all rational numbers as follows. Okay? Okay? So I can go from the set of all integers to the rationals as follows. Uh, psi of k, if k is positive, is going to be sigma of k. And psi, if I have a negative value, so I'll make that negative k, is going to be negative sigma of k. So remember, every possible non-negative rational was one of these function values, and therefore to get the negative function values, I would just plug in negative k, which would be, say, the negative integer. So for example, the psi of 1 is 1. Psi of negative 1 is negative 1. Psi of 2 is a half. Psi of negative 2 is negative a half, so on and so forth. And therefore, this gives me a bijection from the set of all integers to the set of rationals. And we know that the set of all integers is countable because I can go from, um, I can define, let's say, alpha from the set of all integers to the set of all, set of count natural numbers to the set of all integers, where, um, let's say, 
zero gets mapped to zero. Uh, let's say evens. So let's say like evens go to uh, positive and odds go to negative. So for example, alpha of one would be negative one, and then alpha of two would be uh, positive one, and then alpha of three would be negative two, and then alpha of four would be positive two, so on and so forth. So what that does, that actually gives me um, a bijection from the set of integers to the set uh, or natural numbers to the set of integers to the set of rationals. If I was to, was to take the composition of alpha and psi, so this right here proves that the nat the set of all rational numbers has the same cardinality of the set of natural numbers and is therefore countable. Thank you for watching. Please consider subscribing.